lot of you paracord fans probably know what I'm holding here. This is the donut method of storing paracord. Um, it's a quick release method, uh, kind of using a crochet chain sinnet technique. Um, all in all, pretty solid way to store paracord. Um, but I'd been intimidated from it for a long time just because it looks complicated, but finally had to go try it for myself. We also have been using this method a lot here at Paracord Planet. This is just the fast tank method. Um, this is also quick release. doesn't look quite as neat as the donut, but these both have a lot of pros and cons. So we're going to be showing you how to tie both of them, and then we'll go over some of those pros and cons at the end of the video. All right, so we're going to be timing both of these methods just to see which one is fastest, how long each one takes so that you know for making it at home. Um, to make it fair, we're starting out with an untangled piece of paracord for each one. We're going to go with 50 feet. So for this one, we're going to start by wrapping around our hand pretty loosely. Since this is 50 feet, we want to leave plenty of room to tie around our donut. Um, don't go any more than about 10 feet around your hand um, because at that point, that 10 feet will start to get tangled and that kind of defeats the purpose of storing it in a quick release sinnet like this. So we've got a couple rolls around our hand, just a couple inches across. And then we're going to be making a, a loop behind the roll like this. And we'll just twist that once. And we'll bring part of the cord up through the middle and kind of fold it over in a bite and stick it through the other one. We just want to pull that tight. Then we're going to do the same thing on the outside. Fold it over, put it through that loop, and cinch that one tight. Just want to make sure we don't have any tangles in it as we go, and that our previous knot is snug down. Then we're just going to keep on going all the way around the circle. Inside, loop, tighten it down, and outside. You can kind of adjust the size of your loop there too. And then outside loop, tighten it down. Do a couple more here and then we'll speed it up. The first couple knots take the longest, but after that, it'll go a little bit faster. We want to keep any twists out of the cord so that it doesn't twist up when we're trying to unravel it later. So here you can see the, the pattern on the spine, just kind of a zigzag back and forth. You want to keep the, the knots to the outside. We'll keep on building on top of that. As soon as we make one loop, we'll go around again on top of that. So we're going to speed it up and see how long it takes. All right, and then down that last hole, you can just thread your cord through the last loop, and that holds it secure. That took some time. Um, I think it was about 27 minutes that it took this time around. Um, my first time was about a half hour, so I've shaved off a couple minutes, but still quite a long time to wrap 50 feet of paracord to use for later. So if you've got the time for that, great. We're gonna show you the other method now. All right, so now for the quick hank method, starting out with an untangled piece of paracord, and we're gonna time this as well. Um, if you haven't done this before, it's pretty easy. We're gonna start by laying a portion of the cord across our pinky finger with just a little bit of a tail. And then we're gonna begin by wrapping it in a figure eight pattern around our pinky and our thumb. 
So you just want to go over thumb, over pinky, back and forth until we get to the end. So we're going to start over and start our timer. All right, this method is done. Uh, we'll back up in a minute and show you how to finish that off. But this method took us a minute and a half compared to our 27 minutes. So I don't know about you, but I'm willing to put up with a lot of other cons in this method if it takes me a minute and a half, because it's pretty easy to retie if I do it wrong. So let's back up and show you how to finish that one off. All right, when our bundle is all done, we're going to do the same thing as before, but we'll make one smaller S, or one smaller figure eight there on the top. And then what we want to do is wrap our cord around the entire thing, cinch it nice and tight. That's going to be what holds all of it in place. And when you run out of cord, you want to take that smaller loop that we created with our figure eight and put the cord through it. Then we're going to take the other small loop on the other side and cinch it tight. And that holds all of our cord in place. I left a little bit too long of a tail on this one, but what I like to do is just tie a knot in that end, and then you know which end you can pull to make it all come undone. So let's bring the donut method back in here and do some comparing. So like I said, these are both great ways to store a paracord. Um, they're both easy to toss in the bottom of a backpack, and they're not going to come in a tangled mess when you pull them out. Um, but there's some things that are better about each one. You definitely saw that this one takes a whole lot longer to tie, which is a bit of a deal breaker in my mind. But it does have some good things going for it, too. Um, it's nice and heavy and compact. It can be used as a throw weight if you're throwing a line over a tree for hanging a bear bag or something like that. Um, it also is just very tight and organized. This method also is great for taking out little pieces at a time. You can just pull your end out, pull off 10 feet or whatever you need for something, and then stick your end back through, and you've got a tight bundle. This one, if you try doing that, we pull off a couple feet. It stays untangled, but eventually our wraps around the outside become a little bit looser. So you need to kind of take that off, rebundle it a little bit. But because the whole thing only takes a minute and a half to make, or maybe tops five minutes if you're new to this method, it seems to be the better option in my mind for carrying around paracord. There's a couple things that you can do to make it less messy. Instead of using your fingers, you can use two posts if you have that in your workshop or whatever to tie it around. And you can tie more, you, you can wrap a larger portion of the hank so that you don't have as big of ends sticking out that can get caught on things and tangled up. Another con about this is that if you leave it in a donut, if you leave paracord in a donut for an extended period of time, it's going to come out very kinked. Um, because I just wrapped this one, we're not seeing those kinks. Um, but anything that you wrap this tightly, whether it's a paracord bracelet or anything, you're going to get a lot of um, kinks forming in your paracord, and it's not going to be as strong as a result. In this one, there's pretty minimal kinking, um, except where we make our final knot. So it's another pro of this guy. If aesthetics is important to you, um, the donut definitely wins out in that regard. Um, definitely a cool way of wrapping your paracord. So I've been talking at you guys a lot in this video. Uh, now it's your turn to answer back. We're going to be posting a poll on which method you like to use to store your paracord, whether that's the donut method or the fast tank method or something else entirely. So leave us a note in the comments and go find that poll. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.